There was a wedding at Cana in Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples were also invited to the wedding. When the wine ran short, the mother of Jesus said to him, They have no wine. And Jesus said to her, Woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servers, Do whatever he tells you. Now there were six stone water jars there for Jewish ceremonial washings, each holding 20 to 30 gallons. Jesus told them, Fill the jars with water. So they filled them to the brim. Then he told them, Draw some out now and take it to the head waiter. So they took it. And when the head waiter tasted the water that had become wine, without knowing where it came from, although the servers who had drawn the water knew, the head waiter called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves good wine first, and then when people have drunk freely, an inferior one. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this as the beginning of his signs at Cana in Galilee, and so revealed his glory. And his disciples began to believe in him. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Good afternoon, everyone. There was not only wine lacking in our time, in our world, water is not only lacking, but there's also a lacking of order, values, the presence of God, peace, the gospel, God himself. And God is greater than all of our lackings and all of our shortages and faults. What is the word of the Lord telling us? When St. John is remembering this moment, he doesn't describe the, the wedding. We don't know the, the names of the bride and the bridegroom, their family. We don't have the moment when they exchange vows. And so the event that he is communicating to us is the event that goes beyond the wedding simply beginning with the book of Genesis. <laughs> Sacred scriptures begin with the wedding and conclude with the wedding. The wedding of God with his people. We can see that throughout salvation, history is a wedding. And it is this wedding that is taking place in Cana. And this event that St. John is helping us enter into They lacked wine, wine which is the blessing of God, that throughout the wedding and after the vows and after the dancing, there are moments when the father of the bridegroom and the father of the bride give the blessing to their new children. And you can't give a blessing with water, rather with wine. And it begins with the father of the husband, the first blessing. And then the banquet continues, and eventually the father of the bride has to offer the blessing. But the blessing of the father is always with wine. Because to have wine means that there is peace on earth that the earth is fertile, that there's also the possibility of fermenting the wine that requires a family, a place, a home, and also a history to know how to ferment wine. And so wine means the kingdom of God. God is present with us. And at this moment, they are waiting for the blessing of the father of the 
bride with wine. When the mother of God realizes that this couple will not receive the blessing, something greater will happen. And they can't even imagine with whom they will receive the blessing of God. When Our Lady presents this situation, the verses advance quickly. And if we can enter the hearts of Jesus and Mary and understand when Our Lady presents this need of this couple, this family, to the heart of Christ, and Christ looking at the tender and beautiful eyes of his mother, and Christ responds, But remember, Mother, that my hour has not yet come. What does it mean when the hour begins to arrive that Jesus and Mary, the son and his mother, cannot return to Nazareth? That is, when Jesus enters this path with Our Lady, the prophecy of Simon at the temple will begin. And so the hour will come for the piercing of the heart of the son and the piercing of the heart of the mother. Our Lady presented this need and pondered the response of her son. And she proclaims her own fiat, her own yes. It's like the second annunciation when it says, do whatever he tells you. I am also ready to participate in the hour our Lady is saying this. The directions of Jesus are exact, precise. Six jars of clay for the, what are the five blessings of the couple? The wedding begins with a Saturday, and there's six days in between the two Saturdays because it concludes with the next Saturday. And so the six blessings are the ones that the parents will pronounce over the wedding, over the couple. And every day it symbolizes that walking throughout the, the story of creation because marriage is the only blessing that that we have lost from creation and the flood of Noah. And so six days to purify this couple to return to Eden. With what? With water. Because water is symbol of life. Without water, there is no life. Clay jars. Why? Because the clay is the only incorruptible substance in creation. It doesn't matter what someone says or does. The stone water jar. Stone means that stone is the only incorruptible. And so underneath the earth, there's stone. And water comes from underneath the earth. And so six jars with pure water to return to the original blessing of God. Jesus is saying, with this action, we have to return to the beginning, to the original plan of God, with the six jars full of water, water that gives life, abundant water. Jesus says later on in John, the person who believes in living water will gush forth from his own heart because of faith. And the servants cooperate with the word of Jesus, the word of Jesus that they received through Mary. And the water is transformed into wine, and the best wine. And the, and the head waiter preparing the wine for the, wa for the husband and the father and to prepare the people for the words of the Father over this couple. And after tasting a little bit of this wine, he says, Mamma Mia, 
what is this? What has happened? We have the best wine. Yes. Because it's not the blessing of a biological father. It's the blessing of the father. The father of Jesus. Jesus who says, he who comes to me, he who sees me, sees my father. Jesus who is the only savior of the world. And what is sin? The separation of the world from the father. And what did Jesus come to return us to? In his loving arms to the love of his father. And this love of the father is the best one. How we, how can we cooperate in this hour? Which is the hour of the victory of God. When Jesus glorifies the Father, he reveals his love of God for the entire world until the end. The best wine here on Calvary and the cross, pouring all of his love for the centuries and centuries. Amen. Alleluia. Blessing all families with the love of the Father. Yes, we want to cooperate, Lord, with this work. We want to enter our place in history because this world needs this wine, which is the blessing of the Heavenly Father. And what is St. Paul saying? When he is imprisoned in Rome, preparing himself to die. And he says, I kneeling, I praise the Heavenly Father from whom every family receives his name. What does the father do when he blesses a child? The first blessing is to give a name, the authentic identity of the son, the child. This world is a world that's missing its authentic identity that can only be received by the love of the father. And Jesus that through his passion, his cross, and his love, he mediates for us this blessing, which is our authentic name. What do we have to do then? It's very easy. Listen to the mother of Jesus. We have the plan of God here. Allegorically, we have the entire Bible in six verses from the beginning until the end. And she says, do whatever he tells you. And then after listening to the mother, who do we listen to? His son. But perfectly well. Six stone jars. It's the totality of the faith, not a piece of faith. No, we want to preserve the faith as it is in its totality, with fidelity, with cooperation, sacrifice, and full of living water, full of the Holy Spirit. And what is the perfect rock? Our Lady the perfect and pure substance that the world and no one can touch. The Holy Rosary in its simplicity. And we're living in the Marian era, and so we know that we're living in the era of the Rosary. The Holy Rosary is the simple way of entering into this living stone and immaculate to receive the gift of this living water, the Holy Spirit, Our Lady, the Holy Spirit. The fruit is Jesus, this new wine. 
Why don't we pray the Holy Rosary with the heart? And let us ask that the Heavenly Father bless every family, beginning with ours and the entire world. Because at the end, it's between His people, God and His people, and for us, our Heavenly Father. We conclude with words of St. John Paul II. In Cana of Galilee, only one concrete aspect is shown of the urgency of the human need, apparently of little importance. They have no wine. But this wine has a symbolic value. Going to the encounter of the needs of man means that at the same time, the introduction, his introduction into the radius of action of the messianic mission and salvific power of Christ. Consequently, we see a maternal mediation take place. Mary places herself between her son and man's needs in the reality of his privations, sufferings, obstacles. She puts herself in the middle. She becomes mediator, not a stranger, but from her role as mother. Conscience that how that he how he has the right to make present how she has the right to make present the needs of man before her son Jesus. So let us ask through the intercession of the Blessed Virgin Mary that she may present to the heart of Christ all of our needs for which we ask with faith and trust in the love of Christ who came into the world so that we may receive the blessing of the Father. All for the heart of Jesus through the heart of 